Hello everyone, Red Dragon here, and welcome back to U-Boat. Now, something has happened since the last Map Tools video. We actually got the update that brought us Build 127 officially as the current live version of the game, and it's very cool, but also very annoying in some ways. It added a lot of cool new changes and new ships to sync, but there are some bugs and annoyances that have come along with it. If you would like to see me go over some of those excellent changes and kind of annoying changes, there will be a video out either later today or tomorrow covering my brief thoughts on Build 127. A link is popping up somewhere on screen and will be in the description below and at the end of the video. But today we are once again manually targeting torpedoes for our kills. Today's focus is going to be what if you cannot use the periscope? What if it's hazy, cloudy, foggy, nighttime, or you just don't want to use the periscope. What if you want to prosecute your targets just in the map? How do you find speed? How do you find distance? Is there a better way to find the course? All that we can answer today. All of the settings are pretty much the same as the last video. We, are, we have hardcore aiming mode turned off. We are running with Darker Nights turned on. Um, we are running the same time compression. We aren't using the new Build 127 time compression, um, but we are going to see a lot of new ships, hopefully, so stay tuned for that. We are patrolling the area of CG here along the Portugal coast heading into Gibraltar, so we should get some nice uh, shipping lanes coming down from England and the United States uh, into the Mediterranean Sea. But without further ado, let me time accelerate and get set up in our patrol sector and we can start hunting some vessels. I will see you there. Another small side note I should point out while we're on our way to the target area is we have a long distance to travel in the patrol area. We have to sink a whole bunch of enemy trade ships. We brought a war correspondent with us and now we got to go find a lost U-boat in the next two days before they die. So. I'm probably going to skip over all of that until we find a convoy to sink. See you then. One eternity later. All right. Where is this guy at? Oh, hello. He is back here. Well, that's nice. They gave us a ship to go sink. Alright, so like I said, we are not going to be using the periscope in this mission. I have ordered the periscope to remain submerged. And we're just, our radio antenna is poking just out of the water there. So let's time accelerate and wait for these guys to get into hydrophone range. Alright. So we sat, we waited. The three ships of the convoy are now in hydrophone range. Perfect. Now, we are not using the periscope. I have ordered the captain's periscope down. He is not helping us in any way right now. He can't visually spot the targets. That means a couple things. That means, one, we will not be able to tell our crew what types of ships these are. Clearly, we know they're freighters. We could zoom in and see that that's an Empire. This looks to be an Empire. And... That looks to be an Empire. They're all Empire class freighters, but we aren't going to be able to tell the crew that. What we do know is there's there are targets. Much like the last video, we want to, very first thing we do is pause the game, spacebar, and we're going to put a mark on one of the ship's bows. We're going to just choose the closest one. And of course, we're going to leave it there as we do all the other things. And once we're done, we're going to mark it again to find their course. But we can also use that mark to help determine their speed at the same time. So we put a mark there. The next thing we're going to do is a little trick called the three minute rule. Now, the three minute rule works if you are in mixed measurements. So kilometers is your distance measurement, kilometers and meters, and your speed measurement is knots. The math works that this little trick helps you find their speed. So we just put a point on the bow of that ship. We are going to, even though we can't see out of the periscope, theoretically, we're still going to go into the periscope. We're going to go into manual mode and we're going to open the chronometer tool, right? 
you are going to, the game is paused by the way, it's still paused from when you put the mark on the ship. It's very important that you pause the game because we don't want, don't want the ship moving yet. You're going to hit start on the chronometer tool and unpause. Now, even though we can't see the ship, this is still going to help us. This big hand right here, the one that's crossing over the two right now, is accurately counting seconds in the game. This little hand is supposed to accurately count minutes, but as you'll see, it is at 20 seconds, and as it comes down to 30 seconds, it's gonna pass over the one. So I'm hoping the developers fix the uh, mechanics of the clock so it's a little more accurate. But we're gonna count three minutes in game with this stopwatch, focusing just on this big hand. So three times around the clock face is three minutes in game, which means you don't have to wait three minutes in real life, you can time accelerate. So that's one minute, that's two minutes, and we're going to slow time acceleration down just so we can be as accurate as possible. And once it hits three minutes, we're going to pause time. And pause. And we're gonna stop that ticking noise. So that was three in-game minutes. So let's go back to the map. And you can see, that obviously, three minutes passed, the ship's moved. We're gonna put the same mark on the bow of the ship here. So now we have where they were, where they are, and we are going to measure that distance. All right, so according to this measurement, the ship moved 450 meters in three minutes. That we can take and divide that distance by 100. 450 divided by 100 is 4.5. You will use that number, 4.5, as your speed for this convoy, 4.5 knots. It is not laser accurate if you go to Google and type in kilometers per hour to knots or meters to knots. Here, let me do this. Uh, meters per second. So again, I said this earlier, this is not laser accurate. If I were to go to Google and I want to figure out how many knots this actually was exact down to the decimal, I would do 500, so 500 divided by 180 for, so it's, no, it's not, sorry. So 450 divided by 180 seconds. So that's 2.5 meters per second, which is 4.85 knots. So it's not exact, but it's close enough that your torpedo should strike the ship. So for a good rule of thumb, divide the meters the ship traveled in three minutes by 100, and that is the speed in knots roughly for, your tor for the ship. Everyone follow along. So 4.5 knots is the speed that ship is going. Now, if you are using one of the other measurement systems in the game, you could theoretically do this exact same type of math. Now, a real quick note on the measurements in the game. Mixed is my preferred. Kilometers is your measurement of distance. Knots is your measurement of speed. The next one I would probably use is metric, and I probably will switch to metric eventually. Uh, metric is nice because you can do roughly the same math um, to figure out uh, speed a little bit more accurately. Case in point, 450 meters in three minutes. We need to find what that is in 60 minutes. Three goes into 60 20 times, so 450 times 20 is 9,000 meters or nine kilometers because there's a thousand meters per kilometer so in so in kilometers and kilometers per hour so the metric measurement kilometers and kilometers per hour that ship is going nine kilometers per hour and i believe if i were to go select that ship i should be able to type it in in kilometers per hour so speed nine nine kilometers per hour I would probably venture to guess that that is a more accurate measurement than the three minute knots rule. But since most people are gonna be playing on mixed measurements anyway, let's go back and do menu, settings, gameplay, mixed measurements, exit. And you can see it rounded it to five knots, but really we're gonna put 4.5 and it rounds down to four. But 4.5 knots is what I'm gonna put in for this scenario. So 
use whatever system you think works best for you. If you're a metric person, use metric and just know you need to do whatever math to make it meters over 60 minutes or meters per hour. If you're using the three minute rule, it's as simple as waiting three minutes, measuring the distance the ship moved and dividing by 100 meters. And if you're using nautical measurements, you're smarter than I am because I don't understand how long a cable is. I don't understand how long a nautical mile is supposed to be compared to a regular mile. You are a smarter man than I am and any advice on how to measure and plot course and targets with nautical miles as your preferred measurement system, please leave them in the comments below because that is confusing to me. So long story short, 4.5 knots is the speed I have put in for this ship. If you are confused about that, please say it in the comments below or hop on over to our Discord server and ask in the U-Boat chat and I will try to clarify as best I can. And because these are guys are traveling in a convoy, I can safely assume they are all traveling at 4.5 knots and 4.5 knots. Bingo. So we have a speed. Next, we need a course. Conveniently, that measurement actually crossed one of our grid lines here, so we can pretty easily find the course. So let me just make a east-west line here. You should recall this from last week's video, but let me quickly run through it. North is 0 degrees, east is 90 degrees, south is 180 degrees, and west is 270 degrees. So if we were to go from east, being 90 degrees, to the intersect point where they cross this line, we can get nice and close and super accurate. Boom. And so we have 90 degrees plus 96 degrees. So that is 186 degrees, which based on the direction they're going makes sense because south is 180. Six degrees more boop, makes sense. So, we now can put in their course as 186 for all these ships. 186, bingo. 186, bingo. And 186, huh. All right, so we have their course, we have their speed, now we need to figure out how far they are going to be from us when we fire the torpedo, or roughly when we fire the torpedo, because everything is an estimate. Remember that. Everything's a guess until the torpedo hits the target. So all I did was I marked bow, the bow of each of the other two ships, time accelerated a little bit, and then using, and then put another mark on the bow, and then using that line I drew a slightly longer line out to here. And then using that line, I lined it up and drew an even longer line out past in the front of my ship. So that should be approximately where they're going to go in the next several minutes as I set up the torpedo course. Now, there's two ways you can measure, and most people are going to click on the ruler tool, click on where their U-boat is, so right about there, and they're going to draw a line out in front of them and go, that ship is three kilometers from me. Cool. So let's just assume that the nearest ship is three kilometers to us. The way I like to measure my distance is using this compass tool. Now, not a compass that aligns magnetic north and south with the Earth, no. This compass tool is the one that you use to draw perfect circles on drafting boards. See how it creates a nice perfect circle at whatever distance I want? We're essentially going to use this to make sure that my um, distance to targets are nice and measured out. Kind of like you would at like a shooting range. You would measure 
you know, a thousand meter, you know, five hundred meters out, a thousand meters out. You know, you would make you would mark the range of the range so that if you wanted to practice shooting at a specific distance or sight your gun to a specific distance, you knew where the target was. We're going to do a similar thing with the uh, map here. So we know we maximum distance we want to shoot is five kilometers. So we're going to find where this this ring changes from five to four. So five, four, so five kilometers is about right. Come on, right there. It doesn't have to be exact. You're never gonna get it exact. So just do the best you can. Four kilometers is about right there. Three kilometers is about right. Come on, right there. So now we have nice even rings giving us our distance. We have a three kilometer ring, a four kilometer ring, and a five kilometer ring. Now, going back to that original line we drew, estimating roughly three kilometers, it's actually much closer to four kilometers. So I prefer the ring method because one, it gives you all, all points around your ship. So if you're in the middle of a convoy, or maybe you have targets over here as well, you can actually find distance at, at all directions. Now, this does only work if your submarine is stationary. So if you, if you did like I did and get ahead of the convoy, park yourself along their line of travel and wait, this method works best. If you were to plot a course alongside the convoy and match your speed, then you would use the ruler tool and estimate distance that way, or the periscope statometer. I personally like to sit and wait, so this method works best for me. So now that we have concentric rings of range, let's use them to figure the approximate distance the ships will be from us at their nearest approach. Now, the way I'm going to do this is not perfect. I'm sure some of you are going to point out, well, wait a minute, what about this factor that you're not considering? Yes, but for small convoys like this one here, it works fine. I, I have some ideas on how to make it even more accurate, but I want to practice them a, few, a little bit more before I share them with you guys in a video. That being said, so let's go with the furthest ship from us first. Its closest approach is going to be approximately here. Now, let's put a point there. We can measure from where we want this torpedo to strike the ship roughly, the rough area the ship's going to be. And we want to measure out to the next nearest ring. So that's 200 meters approximately. Again, it's not a perfect right angle. It's not perfectly at the nearest point. It's an estimate. So if we go and look, that's 500, or sorry, 5 kilometers. So 5 kilometers plus 200 meters. That's 5,200 meters meters right so we're gonna put that as our distance 5,002 excuse me I would like to type 5,200 meters it's gonna round down to five kilometers but the game knows we mean 5,200 meters we are ready to fire a torpedo at this target excellent we're not we're, we are not ready the ship is ready to fire a torpedo at that all right, let's go to our second nearest target. His closest approach will be approximately here-ish. Now, we have to consider that he's actually going to be a little bit ahead of that because the ships aren't sailing in a perfectly abreast line. But for today's purposes, let's just measure the closest point approximately. So 520 meters from the 4-kilometer ring. So that's 4 thousand five hundred and twenty meters so let's do this four thousand five hundred and twenty meters bingo rounds down to four kilometers i'm fine with that the game knows what i mean and the third ship here his closest approach to us is going to be about so 70 meters in from the 4 kilometer mark. So his closest approach is going to be 3,930 meters. Alright, so let's punch that in. 3,930. Take some time before you set everything up to fire the torpedoes, before the ships are on top of where you want to shoot them at. 
take some time to double check. So yeah, we had, what, 5,200 for this ship? Let's double check. That was the five kilometer ring. Plus 200, yes. Because I have very easily done the thing where you go, oh, it's the three kilometer ring. My, you, you know, you just have the wrong number in your head, so you put the wrong distance in. I have done that. Don't make that mistake. Take the time. Double check your work, like your math teacher always said to do. And double check that the distances are right. Looking at this, 5,200, 4520, 3,000, so 4,000 minus 70, 39, 30. Yes, that lo all looks correct. Um, our guy, let's make sure he's up warming torpedoes because he's been asleep this whole time. So we need to warm the torpedoes. In fact, we're going to order our engine guy to go warm torpedoes. I forgot about that. That's kind of a downside of the scheduling is um, if I'm at a dead stop, I would like the engine room guy to not work the engines. If the engines aren't running, he should be doing the next thing I ordered him to do. But I digress. So we're going to wake these guys up, have them warm torpedoes. We're going to time accelerate a little bit. We got plenty of time before the ships are in the optimum firing point here. Okay, let's do right there. That seems like a good spot to fire the torpedoes at. Let's double check that all our, our torpedoes are warm. All of our torpedoes are warm. Excellent. So, we have a course of 186. We have a speed of 4.5 knots, approximately. And we have their approximate distances figured in. So, starting with the furthest freighter from us, we are going to unpause the game... Flood tube one. And fire. We're gonna flood tube two. And while it's flooding, select the next nearest target and get ready to fire. And then for our target ship, the Empire Lily, which I know to be the nearest one to us, we're gonna fire two torpedoes. And any moment now. Fire. Alright, that should do it, I hope. Let's go into the cinematic view and hope that I don't do a repeat of last video and miss the target live on camera. We got two solid hits. Are we going to get a third hit? I wonder. It looks like it. I see the uh, trail of our torpedo going dead amidships of this guy. Bingo. All right, that's three solid hits on target, even though there was a good delay between the three of them. The torpedo was already close enough that slowing down or changing course was not going to help these guys in the slightest. So three solid hits. Uh, we appear to be taking on water for our target vessel. Empire Lily sunk. Perfect. That was the outcome we wanted. The f unknown freighter uh, also has sunk, it looks like. Or is going to do that weird thing where it just floats like that and we have to go sink it. This guy is burning and doesn't appear to want to die. So we might have to go hunt him down as well. Oh, nope, there he goes. Lots of damage being done. That's another thing. I think the health bar is kind of dual purpose. So the light green is the ship's health. The faded green is its health, but it's also got still has watertight integrity, I think. Mm. 
So yeah, so what I was explaining about the health bar is I think when it's light green, that means the ship is operable. When it's faded green, it's damaged but still seaworthy, still float floating. And then as that faded green bar goes down, that is its watertight uh, integrity. So like this guy, yeah, now he's wreckage. So if does that make sense? Like green is combat capable, faded green is buoyant buoyancy, and then nothing is it's flooding. This blue blue is like I'm out flooded. That is that at least makes sense to me. I don't know about you guys, but let's get uh, just call me mind here, named after one of the stream viewers, as all the officers currently are, because if they weren't by the time I started stream stream tomorrow, people would lose their minds. Anyway. Get him on the deck gun, go take care of this guy who just refuses to sink, pump a couple of high explosive rounds into him, and call it a day. Alright, let's sink this guy. Actually, we should probably switch. We should probably switch to armor piercing punch a hole right at the water line there. Cut that short. Let's try to get a better shot. Ooh, that was a good one. And we'll do one more toward the bow. Excellent. Let's start turning the ship a little bit. And we'll swap back to high explosive. See if we can set a fire, maybe. Come on, guy. I don't know how much more you want me to do to you here. There we go. I found that if you fire a high explosive round or into a hole that you made with your armor piercing, it tends to do a lot of fire damage. And let's bring her back. Nope, that's not what I want. All right, she's sinking. Excellent. Right, let's scroll wheel out. Okay, you can stop that. Cease fire. Cease fire. You are relieved of duty, sir. Go chill. You, please radio the Empire L Litten? Lighten? Whatever. Empire Lighten has been sunk, and you as well are free to go to bed if you need to. Or continue working if you are still on schedule. Alright, so that's three ships sunk using map tools only. No periscope, no ship identification, no statometer, chronometer. Well, technically no chronometer, as it should be traditionally used, but still uh what do you guys think do you think that works how'd you like the three minute rule explanation should i switch to uh metric system only what are your thoughts i hope that helps again this is meant to slowly walk you into using manual targeting a little bit more and this will help you find ships at night or during bad weather because the hydrophone will work and you can utilize it you do not need the periscope to sink ships with that being said, if you have any questions, throw them in the comments below or hop over to our Discord server, link also in the video description below. And if this comes out on Wednesday like I would like it to, uh, we will be streaming U-Boat and messing around with uh, Build 127 and the like, and we can answer your questions there as well. Keep a lookout for that Build 127 video that'll probably come out the same day as this video or the next day, and... Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.